So I'm sitting there like, shh, 500 a week. I'm thinking about like, you know, my dudes be coming through with these 25s a week. Then my partner DC don't come through with dub 25 a week. Some weeks is dry, you know, they got bills, they got stuff out there, they got the hell. Now I'm thinking like five honchos a week. See, stoke car wasn't but $60 a week back in them days. So 60 a week, you still got what? 440 to do you with a week? <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> so he like, have you ever ran chain gang game before? I was like, nah. He was like, you know what it is? I was like, I, I, I got a pretty good idea of what it is. He said, listen, bro, how long you been locked up? So I told him a couple years. He said, listen, bro, messing with me? With me? You messing with me? Oh, boy. Boy, you would run it up. You would go crazy. So I'm like, ha. Ah. He like, so what's up? You with it or what? So I'm like, bro, I'll just let me think about it for a minute. He was like, man, listen, bro. Man, I done ran up like a million dollars running chain gang game. I'm like. I guess it was my facial expression. I ain't say nothing, but I'm thinking in my head, bro, you did not run up no million dollars running no chain gang game. Cause I'm thinking about how Jay was telling me. Now his 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 method sounded good, but you know, Jay like, I try to get a couple hundred every other week or something like that. And I'm just thinking like, bro, you ain't ran up a million dollars doing that. What I didn't even pay attention to at first was the man had like five or six phones lined up on his bed. Um, the people that left out his room, they had five phones in their hand. It was just five people with a phone and a writing tablet per person. They left out the room. So he said, hold on a little bit. Let me show you something. The man grabbed one of the phones. He scrolled through it. He went to the uh, Chase, the bank Chase. He went to the app. He pulled something up and showed me, bro. It was like $117,000 in it. He went to a whole nother app. I forgot what bank it was. I can't remember what bank it was. And he showed me something else, man. It had like 160 something thousand dollar I'm dead serious. And he was like, this is just what I got on hand right now. I had way, way, way more than this. He talking about Von Dukes ran off on me with like 300 racks. She just took it and ran off, but she could have that. That ain't nothing. Now, now she broke, she done messed the money up. Now she calling me and I don't, I don't even talk to her no more. And I'm just thinking like, damn, Von Dukes. But hell no, nah. I don't even know how to take that. I leave out. I go in my room. Think about it. I'm talking about, I'm thinking about it all day, bro. So the next day, I pulled up on him. I'm like, man, what's happening, bro? I was hungry, hell. I don't think I had much. I don't think I had no food, really. If I did, it was only a little bit. And uh, he was like, look, that's what I'm going to do for you. And he gave me one of the phones. He was like, do you feel comfortable having this phone 24 seven like it's yours. I'm like, yeah, why would I not? What you mean? He was like, because we had a level five prison, bro. You know, people be getting robbed, all kind of stuff. He was like, now, nah, if you don't feel comfortable, then I just let it be known to everybody that this is my phone. Bet not nobody try nothing to slip because they already know what's up with me. They know I'm going to go crazy. So I'm like, nah, I'm straight. Man gave me the phone. I turned it on. He went through it, bro. He had all kind of uh dating apps on here i'm talking about all kind of apps so in the in the call log bro it wasn't nothing but 1-800 numbers he told me he said listen all these dating apps he said you gotta set up an account he said wait until he said set up the account first but when it get to the part where it's telling you to upload a photo wait don't upload no photo yet come back over here and holler at me he said all these chat lines he said all these is chat line numbers that you're going to need to call and jump on and just, you trying to talk to anybody. You don't care. You don't care what she say she look like. He like, I don't care if she's the total opposite of your real preference. Just talk to her anyway. And he was like, we got to get you right first. So go ahead. Cause I got something else to do. Just go set up accounts. Don't upload no picture. Then come back over here and holler at me. I'm like, all right. So, you know, I'm enjoying it, bro, because now I got, a phone. I ain't got to worry about buying phone time from nobody. So I'm in here setting up all the accounts like he told me to do on all these dating apps, bro. These online dating apps. But, man, I got my baby mama on speakerphone. I done called mom dukes. I'm talking to my family. You know what I'm saying? All kind of stuff. Probably about an hour went by. I was almost done with all the accounts. 
I've been talking to my baby mama the whole time. So bro knocked on my door. I'm like, yo, he walk in the room. He like, what's up, bro? You still working on that? I say, yeah, I still got like two, three accounts uh, left. So he stopped when he heard, he heard my baby mama saying something. He was like, I was like, oh, this is my baby mama. He was like, all right, well, hey, we got to handle something real quick. So I was like, hey, baby, I'm going to call you back. She was like, all right. So dude was like, hey, listen, bro, I ain't, you know, I ain't the type to try to uh, say nothing crazy or make a person feel like, you know, you can't talk to your family or you can't rock with your family. He said, bro, but this is a business farm. He said, I'm going to let you do you all day. You can be able to talk to whoever you want to. But, bro, when we handling business, we handle business on this farm, bro. He said, you talk to your folks after you handle the business. We got to get the business squared away first. I felt like he was halfway down crazy then because it's like, I, even if that is true, okay, exactly what you just said, I'm setting up the accounts. It ain't like I'm not setting them up and just on the phone. I'm just on speaker, but I'm setting them up. You know what I'm saying? So I leave out the room with him. The dude that cut hair in the dorm with the comb and the razor, he's sitting down there at the table. He was looking straight at me. So we walked over there. He was like, yeah, he about to cut you up. So I'm looking at him. I'm thinking like shit, but I guess he already knew what I was talking about. He was like, nah, I already paid him. You good. So I sat down. My lineup was kind of fading. Not fading, but it was rough looking. Hair was growing all back. My hair just wasn't cut. I ain't had no fresh lineup. Barbara got me right. Cut my hair up real good. Lined my beard up, all that. So when I got done, I guess bro had already paid him some. So when I went to holler at Sosa, he was like, you got a fresh uniform? I was like, hell no. He said, you got some fresh clothes? I said, yeah, like my T-shirts. He was like, they white, white? I was like, yeah, they clean and white. He was like, but you ain't got no fresh press uniform with the creases in them? I was like, nah. So he was like, bro, tonight before we lock down, bring me your uniforms. I'm going to send them out to my laundry, man, and I'm going to make sure we get them pressed up real good. I'm like, all right. So he was like, oh, yeah, I got to give you some food real quick. To give you your food. He like, man, why the hell you ain't say nothing? Whole day went by, bro. The 25 he was supposed to give me, I ain't even get it. He put it together in the room. We went to talking about this damn chain gang game. I done left out the room, went in my room. It was just crazy, so. He gave me more than 25. He gave me like $35 in food. Then he told me we need to take pictures in a fresh uniform. So I ain't even took a shower yet. I still got all this hair on me. He like, little bro, go hit the shower, then come back and jump in a fresh uniform. So I'm like, all right. Now I'm thinking, bro, when I'm in the shower, I'm washing my head up. I'm thinking like, what? This man, haircut, food, fresh uniform. This man running the damn business from prison. <laughs> So, I done came out, I done got right with a little lotion on me, everything, Vaseline all on my face. I done put the uniform on, creased up, super clean. Man, they gave me a pair of boots with the tips shine, looked like a mirror. And he went to taking like a bunch of pictures of me. And then he deleted some, retook some. He like, yeah, these is the ones that you put on them accounts. These the ones you put on them accounts. So I'm like, all right, bet. So now that we got the account set up, he was like, all right, look, this is what we're going to do. He said, set your location for such and such, whatever area we was at. And then he was like, then we can start hitting these chat lines. He said, that's what I need you to do. He said, every single one of these chat lines give you a 60-minute free trial. I need you to get on these chat lines and get on these free trials. And, bro, you going to catch, I'm telling you, bro. So while he talking to me, his phone go to ring. He answered the phone. He like, what's up, baby? So they chopping it up. So he like... He tell me I can go to my room, go ahead, just do my thing. So I leave out, I go to my room, I'm doing my thing. About two hours done went by. A few people done hit me on the uh, on the little dating apps. I'm sitting there talking to these female. I'm just having casual conversation with them, you know what I'm saying? Next thing I know, C Bill, C Bill, say little bro, C Bill. So I stick my head out the door. I'm like, what's up? It's him. He like. So I go upstairs real quick. So when I walk in, I see he got the phone in his hand. I could see a face on there, but he got the mute button on there. So he looked at me. He said, hey, listen, the girl I'm talking to, her sister just came down this way. She like in Georgia and she keep making jokes talking about she trying to find somebody that's in prison. She want her a little chain game boo thing. So I'm about to put you on. He says, bro, listen, bro, the girl works in a uh, district attorney office, bro. She ain't she ain't got no high position in there, but bro, she make a hell of a lot of money, bro. He say, listen, I'm about to put you on her, bro. 
talk to her. I'm about to tell you everything you need to do and say. But as of right now, when I put you on the screen with her, bro, he said, bro, the way she looks, bro, you might not like her. But, boy, you better act like she damn Beyonce. So I'm like, all right. So he like, bro, listen, just kick it with her, bro. Just talk to her. We ain't even doing too much right now. I just want you to talk. Just get familiar. Let her know where you from. He was like, listen, bro, whatever it is she asking you, whatever information you do and don't want her to know or whatever the case, he said, I recommend you lie. Lie about everything. Lie about your favorite color. Lie about your favorite food. Lie about wherever you from. But if you lie about wherever you from, you better know something about that area because it'd be just your luck. She knows something about that area. He said, but I recommend lying about everything. I don't tell them the truth about nothing. I don't tell them my real name. None of that. So it was kind of funny why he was saying it, but bro, just me being a tight person I am, as I really was thinking about it, like digesting his words, bro. Like I said, I felt out of place because it's like, damn, I got to sit here and lie and lie and lie to people. And I'm already knowing what the ending going to be. You know what I'm saying? But Hey, man, at that time, I just went ahead and did it. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I'm just keeping it real. I don't, uh, do I regret it? Yeah, because I just feel like that ain't something I should have been doing. I shouldn't have tapped into that. But, so, he take the phone off mute. So, he like, yeah, they're my little brother, CB. So, I get her on the camera. So, as soon as I look on the camera, she like, ooh, you a cute little chocolate thing. I had the wave spinning back then. So I'm sitting here chopping it up with her. So she like, you got a phone? She was like, you better have your own phone. So he snatched the phone. He like, yeah, my little brother got his own phone. Don't try him like that. So she like, what's your number? I don't even know the damn number because I just got it not too long ago. So I'm like, give me your number. So she gave it to me. So I hit her on the thing. So I'm getting ready to walk out the room. He put the phone back on me. He like, hey, Bill. So I turn around. I'm like, what's up? He was like, listen, just kick it for right now. Just kick it. He said the whole I'm, I'm about to do something different with her. He said, I'm about, to, I'm about to work out something a little different than I'm doing with everybody else. He said, but just kick it, bro. Just kick it normal, regular, like this. somebody you really trying to get to know, somebody you real life trying to deal with. Just kick it. We ain't doing too much right now. He was like, you ain't even got to ask about where she work, how much money she make, what she do for a living. I already know all that. He said, bro, but what I will tell you to do, you got a writing tablet and ink pen down there. I said, I ain't got no writing tablet, but I got some loose pieces of paper. He said, all right, listen, when you get down there talking to her, bro, write her name on the paper. Anything she tell you about herself, write it down. If she tell you she got kids, write it down. Write their name down. Write their age. Write their birthday down. And then one day in mid-conversation, just bring it back up to her. She going to be like, oh, you remembered all that? And then you just play along with it. He said, bro, but just kick it because I'm, I'm, I'm about to work something else with her. I got, I got a plan for her. So just kick it. Just chill. So I'm like, all right. I'm like, so you don't want me to call the chat lines? He said, no. He was like, if somebody hits you from one of them date naps, you could text them back. But right now, our main focus is her. So I'm walking out. I'm like, all right. So I'm walking out the room. While I'm walking out the room, somebody else, damn near running in the room, excited. He running in the room. He say, Sosa, Sosa, bro, it work, bro. Sosa, bro, it work, bro. He got the phone in the right hand. He got the writing tablet in the left hand. So Sosa buzz out laugh. He say, how much she sent? She sent it. He said, 4500 4500 My mom dudes just picked it up from the Walmart, the Walmart money transfer. Bro, she just sent 4500 bro. So, Sosa and the dudes started laughing. Sosa done gave him some dap, this, this, and that. So, Sosa was like, all right, tell my dudes, keep your cut. Send the rest of that. It's so crazy, though, because Sosa was like, tell my dudes, take your 500 do whatever you trying to do with it. And then, matter of fact, tell my dude, she could keep 200 too. Let my dudes keep 200 and then send me the rest of that. So the rest of that is like, what, 3,800, ain't it? Say so like this, send me the rest of that. So I was thinking about it as I was walking out, but I wasn't really tripping because I didn't have nothing at the time. But I was thinking like, damn. So, so yeah, he, he, he showing you how to do it, but it's like you the one sitting there putting in all the work and you just struck for 4,500. And you getting 500 out the cut and you already doing wrong, playing with people. You ain't even got no business playing like this. But I guess because he provide the phone and, oh, you know, whatever. But, I mean, it was real, bro. I promise you, the chain gang game is a very, very real thing. And this man Sosa was running a real live business from prison, uh, providing the phones and providing the script that people needed to run. I'm talking to this girl every day, bro. And it, she was not my type, period, at all, mentally or physically. 
Um, she was not my type, period. But, I mean, it was like, it was kind of a way to, to quench my boredom also and depressedness from being in the prison. I really feel bad for saying that, bro, because it's like, damn, I really was talking to this girl knowing I wasn't interested for real, but she was helping time go by. So now I'm talking to her for like a good week and it done got to the point where we're talking every day. Now I take Sosa the phone back at night before we lock down. So he put it up in his hiding spot. As soon as the doors pop early morning, I'll go get it. And I'm talking to her in the morning while she go to work, on the way back, all that type stuff. We about a weekend. One day I go up there to get the phone. Sosa like, he gave me the phone. He said, listen, I changed the number on that phone. He said, do not reach out to old girl from no platform. Don't talk to her. None of that. He said, do not text her. If she texts you on Instagram, Facebook, do not respond to nothing. He said, just jump straight on the chat line for now. And uh, I got that planned out. I'll let you know when I need you again. So I'm slick feeling some type of way because it's like, damn. I mean, I'm saying I'm feeling like she ain't my type, bro. But it's like I had done got into a pattern of talking to her like I did believe if I wouldn't have been playing games that we could have had a genuine friendship based off the way she was. I kind of missed it talking to her, bro. Not even on no script running. I had got used to talking to this person. So I'm on the chat line. I'm thinking about old girl all day. So Sosa called me up there later on. I go up there. I'm like, what's up, bro? He like, look, showed me a message thread where he had text old girl, where he texted his girl and was telling her to tell old girl that my phone got knocked off and I got in a big fight or something like that and I ended up going to the hole. And it's a phone for sale, but they want like $1,000 for it. And he said, me, C. Bill said, he ain't got but $200 to his name and he need another eight to get the phone. Old girl sent the $800, bro. She had got so comfortable with me, so used to talking to me, bro. She sent the $800. So he going through this whole process of telling her that he got to get me the phone and the hole and all kind of stuff. To be honest, bro, when I posted this at first, it's a lot of stuff I left out that I'm just straight up saying now. It's just cause I was kind of uncomfortable doing it at first anyway because I felt like hell nah. But now... I'm going to just tell y'all what it is, bro. I waited a few hours, and then it's a dude downstairs and who Sosa be renting his room out. Now, this dude got is, is, is two white guys, and all they do all day is, uh like, they run tattoos and stuff like that. But certain things like the room, they don't give a damn about that room. So Sosa used to rent this room out sometime. So he told me, go down there because this room is farther back all the way at the bottom. So it's quiet. The neighbors, like the people who are in both sides of the room, they don't be making no noise or nothing. They just quiet people. So we done went down here. So Sosa like call her back, act like you in the hole. So I'm like, ah. Right. So now I'm talking to her in this quiet ass room. I'm acting like I'm in the hole the whole time. So she like, oh my God, what happened? And bro, I'm sitting here capping, talking about, yeah, the nigga, he, he swung on me and I did this. And it's like, bro. I just was feeling like this ain't finna last too much longer, bro, because I don't, I just wasn't feeling it, bro. I was feeling guilty, bro. You know what I'm saying? I just I just wasn't feeling it. And he has so many people on his payroll doing this, bro. So now the girl seems to get suspicious. She starts just asking me certain questions like, what you say your last name was again? Now, you know, I told her the wrong last name or whatever. So we just chopping it up. She seemed to start backing up on the suspiciousness. She wasn't asking me all kind of crazy questions no more. Probably about another two, three weeks into it, Sosa pulled up in the room while I'm talking to old girl. He opened the door. He said, bro, cert team in here. Cert team on the floor. Cert team on the floor. Hurry up, hurry up. Cert team on the floor. He screamed that out real loud. Bro, I go to fumbling so hard, I don't even say nothing to old girl. I hang up the phone. I'm passing him the phone. I'm jumping up trying to figure out what I need to do. He busts out laughing. He like, man, ain't no damn cert. He look at the phone. He said, man, ain't no damn cert team out there. He cut the phone off, powered it all the way off. I'm like, cert team ain't out there? He like, hell no. Nah. I'm like, well, what the hell you did that for? He was like, because I wanted her to hear me say that. He said, now nah, this phone finna be off about three, four days. We not even gonna power it on no more. Man pulled another phone out of his pocket and was like, huh, use that one from now on. Um, 
you can call her back, but wait a couple hours, call her back, tell her you're using somebody else's phone, you're buying phone time, and you need another phone. And then tell her that I know who got the phones for sale, so then my girl gonna bring it up to me, and we finna try to get her out about three, four racks. And Bray was just like, damn, so surprised this girl out here really working a job, you know what I'm saying? And um, I went to talking to her, bro. It just, it just was terrible, bro. She was so worried about me. She was like, oh my God, I heard them people screaming 13 coming in the building. You okay? I'm like, yeah. She like, don't worry about that phone. Yeah, you lost that phone, but at least you ain't in a hole no more. And it just made me feel bad again. Like, damn, I wasn't ever even in a hole the first time. So support up on me later on. He gave me the other phone back. And he was like, give me that one back. And he was like, she bought you another phone. He was getting ready to walk out the room. So I'm like, hold up. How much she sent for the phone? He was like, little brother, that don't matter. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm, now I'm starting to get uncomfortable. With her. I'm like, what you mean? He was like, it don't matter. I'm like, if I'm about to call her and talk to her, you don't think it's going to come up at no point? About the amount of money she sent. You don't think I need to know that? And then he sat there and thought about it for a minute. He was like, you right. You right, bro. He was like, my bad, bro. I'm tripping. He was like, 1800 though. She sent 1800 Then he walked out the room real quick. I'm saying, thank you. Yeah, she done sent $2,600, and I ain't even really known her like that. And I'm getting 500 at the end of the week, and I'm already going against my morals. I'm like, hell no, nah, bro. I ain't finna do this no more. So he texts me. I was like, just play cool. We ain't finna do nothing else for a minute. We're gonna give it a little time. Just play cool. I'm just still talking to her. Now she's real life asking me for pictures of me when I was younger. What's my mama name? What's my GDC number? Because it ain't showing up in the system. But I'm telling her, like, mine don't show up. I really had just made one up. But I'm like, mine don't show up. You know what I'm saying? So she's like, I'm saying, why would yours not show up? I'm like, I don't know. It's just the way it's been like that since I've been locked up. My account, my thing don't never show up on the GDC inmate search website. Bruh, Sosa comes one day. He like, it's time to run it. It's time to run down on her again. She done got paid. Her sister just told me she got a raise. Oh yeah, we got to get her about like another three racks. Now I'm just saying that thinking like, damn, this is what, he's this consistent with just me. So what about all these other people he got on his payroll? That's how he running that money up like that. And people don't got no phone. They don't. If Sosa cut you off and say it's over with, you're not going to be able to talk to nobody that much because you're not going to have access to no phone. He tried to, well, it was a situation that actually happened at the prison for real that was on the news where somebody lost their life. It was a big gang situation. He tried to utilize that time and tell her that I was involved in it. And all I, all I need this time is 1500 for a phone. She wasn't going for it. She said... She need to see a picture of me on the GDC website. She this, she that. So when we came off lockdown, he gave me the phone. There was a whole bunch of long text messages in there. Like, well, she feel like I'm playing games. And she was like, man, I done called to that prison just to check on you. And they told me they don't even got an inmate by that name that you gave me. She was like, man, so if you don't keep it 100 with me and just tell me straight up what's your name, GDC number, this, this, and that, I'm going to just have to stop dealing with you. It break my heart that people would play games with me like that, you know, this, this, and that. And I showed it to Sosa. And Sosa was like, change the number on the phone. F her. I'm about to tell her sister or whatever that you got transferred. You ain't in the dorm with me no more. On to the next one. He said, if I find something else, I need you to immediately jump on. He said, I got you. But as of right now, that uh, them them chat lines, get on them chat lines ASAP. Go ahead, though. Like two, three other people was walking in the room. One of them talking about Sosa. I got the green dot. The other one talking about Sosa. Sosa, what's your folks name to put the money on Western Union? It was crazy, bro. He just be like, yeah, go ahead, though. So when I walk out, bro, I went and reread the messages all over again, bro. And I was just like, damn, bro, that's terrible, bro. I really felt bad. I really feel bad right now, bro. I ain't going to lie. But it's part of my experience, bro. It's part of my story. So I, so I got to tell y'all, rest in peace, AD, that I spoke of in another video about how he used to have a press on people and he used to do things to people, but it was never about nothing petty. It was about the major stuff. He ended up sending a message to Sosa one day telling Sosa that 
he wanted two phones and he wanted a thousand dollars. And if he wanted to keep his business running, he'd send it to him. Sosa bucked on him. All I know is, bro, one morning I came out of the room. I was getting ready to go to Sosa room to get the phone so I could do my thing. When I came out the room, I seen AD and another dude behind him. And when I, w I was walking across the big floor, AD looked over at me. He said, little bro, what's up? So I was like, what's going on with you, bro? He was like, finna go splack Sosa. So I'm like, whoa, hold up, nah. So I, I kind of stopped walking that way. He walked up on me. Gave me some dap. And it's like I felt bad because it's like, damn, I don't know what to do, bro. Like, I, I'm having business going on with Sosa. You know what I'm saying? And I think like two or three days before this was like the second or third time he paid me 500 a week. Now, even even on the weeks that was slow, after old girl was like, it's over with, he was still giving me 500 a week. And it's like, damn, am I supposed to run up here and let Sosa know? But at the same time, AD, that's my guy, the strong way, you know what I'm saying? He like, I'm finna go splat Sosa. But he said it so loud, bro, it ain't no secret. And then Sosa is up early, early morning, bro. Like when I be waking up and going up there and I be the first one up, Sosa be already woke. He just don't be coming out of his room. So I felt like, you know, so he goes up that way to the room. Him and the other dude go right behind him. And I was right, but Sosa was already on point. I guess he had already, you know, endured so many AD threats. AD snatched the door open. All I seen was Sosa doing like this. AD weaved it. And it's like the other dude that was right there grabbed Sosa's hand and pulled him. And uh, AD and the other dude, like they went to swinging on him first. They ain't even hit him with the candy bar. I ain't going to cap. The dude that was with AD, Sosa was handling. So Sosa was like, AD was getting on him, but Sosa was hitting dudes so hard. Like, he was kind of, like, trying to stop. Like, so I would, took off running up there. Cause at this point, I'm like, all right, ain't nobody, you know what I'm saying? They done took the candy bar from him. They just trying to fight. Maybe I could get in between them. And even though I know I ain't had no business doing that. But when I ran up there, Sosa looked at me and said, little bro, get back. Little bro, get back. These niggas ain't talking about They ain't talking about so he swung on AD. So I went to backing up some. Man, AD pulled out that candy bun. I'm talking about flip Sosa the worst way. Sosa took off running to the door, beating on the door. The police finally came, opened the door, let him out. I'm still standing on the day room floor. AD and the other dude inside Sosa room, tearing the room up, looking for stuff. And uh, I hear I hear Sosa going to tell me, see, Bill, tell my girl what's going on, bro. When the officer popped the door and let him out, he took off running up the walk. I think the officer was down with them, bro, because she called a code, but she called it to this dorm over here to the left. And she took a long time to let Sosa out the door. You know what I'm saying? She kept looking up that way. So when they came out the room, AD, like, you could tell it was stuff in his pants, like, stacked up in his pants and stuff. He was like, he was coming down the steps. He was like, yeah, that's what your, let's get around here playing these games with these folks. That's what you get. That's what you get. And, bro, he put his, got his shirt together and stuff. You could see all the police, all the staff members running into the dorm to the left. So AD and the other dude came out running. As soon as they made it to the door, the officer popped the door, and they ran out, and they went that way. All the police went in there. They went that way. And then once they got all the way down there on the end, the girl got on the radio, and I guess she said, y'all in the wrong damn dorm. And then that's when they turned around and came inside this dorm. And like I say, bro, the camera's raggedy, you know what I'm saying? So they don't really. So they came in there and made us lock down. Bro, that situation bothered me and bothered me and bothered me and bothered me and bothered me so much, bro. And I ain't even going to count, not even the, the, the whole thing that happened with bro, but more so with the girl, bro. When I say it bothered me so much, one day they do mail call. They call my name. They don't never call my damn name in no mail call. I go get a letter. It's from old girl. How does she know my real information? I don't know. She searched and dug good enough. And bro, it was just a long letter telling me how disgusted with me she is. And how that little $2,600 ain't nothing to her. But how ashamed of myself I should be. This, 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 and that. I couldn't even write her back, bro. But what I did was I kept her information. I had already knew her number. And I made a promise to myself, bro, and to the most high that 
I'm going to give that girl her money back. If I don't do nothing else, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to give her her money back. And later on, years later, once I reached the point of my bid where I was having the motion, where I was having it, I was doing, hey, bro, I was having it going on. I was the one with the phones, all the stuff, all the money. I reached out to her, bro, and sent her money back. And at first she acted like she ain't want it. She ain't want to talk this and that. But I sent it. She accepted it. And we just ain't talk no more after that, bro. And, and I just felt like, hey, bro, I felt a little better. I, not a little. I felt a lot better. I ain't going to lie. Like, I gave you your money back. I learned the lesson from doing something against my morals. And I let it hit my pockets later on. I gave you your money back. I apologize for playing with your feelings. I told her that. She was like, all right, we ain't talk no more. So, bro, don't play on nobody and tell it. Don't play on nobody feelings, bro. That's a terrible feeling, bro. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're not playing with nobody, bro. I know that's a trend nowadays and a lot of people doing that. That's lame. And, bro, I just feel like you, you have set yourself up for a curse almost. Like, you're going to be in trouble with the most hot. Keep playing with people because then – you're going to be getting played with. It's going to be all kind of stuff going on. Let's just not do that, bro. Let's make money, not excuses. It's your boy, Bill. I'm gone.